Welcome back to Rise and Shine. And uh, as we promised, uh, we do have a special guest uh, today uh, on board in the show. And uh, he is uh, Mr. Jagat Ramanayaka. Very good morning to you, Mr. Jagat Ramanayaka. And uh, he is um, one of the export uh, dealers of vehicles in Japan. And uh, our discussion today will be based on um, about uh, how uh, he has uh, been dealing these vehicles. And we'll be uh, mainly focusing our discussion on the uh, Ruhunu Magampatu, uh, the port uh, that is uh, um, that has uh, finished uh, its completion, uh, that has reached its completion in the construction, and how it will be used uh, in the future uh, for the exports and the import of the uh, vehicles um, in this uh, particular port. So, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Jagat Ramanayaka, so what is um, actually this RMABK about? Yeah, it's RamadiBK. Yeah. Uh, it's my uh, organization which uh, I have. We export vehicles from Japan to the countries out of uh, Japan. It, it export for about 55 countries around the world. Sri Lanka also is one of them uh, okay. right now. Yes. All right. Uh, so, um, so how did it all start, and how um, did you uh, happen to go to Japan, and how did everything start yeah. off? As a student, I uh, had to, uh, after my A levels, I mm -hmm. did from higher education, I visited Japan mm -hmm. and uh, got into a Jap language school, and I, I joined to a university and did my masters in Japan. Mm -hmm. So by the uh, when I was studying, I started this business at a small uh, scale, mm -hmm. and after my graduation. Uh, we managed to have this organization mm -hmm. which was uh, more with the internet uh, to you know to produce to sell cars through the internet and this was our main uh, starting uh, point mm -hmm. so at that time in japan i think there was about three or four organizations which had a home page which was uh, uh, very rare mm -hmm. so but with my education i ch i managed to have this kind of a home page with the help of my uh, relatives uh, to get this page uh, launched. So due to that, our organization was uh, popular around the world because they had a chance to see the vehicles for their first time, the photographs of the cars through this internet. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, what is the significance of uh, the Sri Lanka Automobile Exporters Association in Japan and how is uh, this uh, exporting of the vehicles done? What's the procedure behind it? Uh, the exporter, uh, the Sri Lankan Exporters Association was uh, recently formed. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the, the ambassador, uh, Mr. Vasanta Karannagoda, uh, brought this proposal. As this exporting business from Japan to Sri Lanka has been there for the last 30 years, uh, but there has not, there were no association in Japan mm -hmm. to support these exporters and uh, to help them and when they could discuss their problems. So mm -hmm. I think uh, he uh, looked into this and he wanted me to uh, get together with other exporters and start this organization. And uh, as, uh, as you know, people who are living in Japan, if you take uh, the business people, I think the 80% of them are uh, involved in this car export business. So uh, it's like a majority in Japan who's, who is doing this. And we have been uh, not, uh, we, di we didn't have a chance to get together and uh, the embassy support was not there. Now we have the full support for the, from the embassy mm -hmm. to, be, to get this association. And uh, every day when we, day to day problems and when we want to discuss with the government or uh, even with the Japanese authorities mm -hmm. about exports, uh, I'm not just talking about the, the Sri Lankan exports, you know, the, 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 there are very experienced exporters who would uh, export vehicles to other countries. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a whole, if you look at the Sri Lankans who, who are there, and we have about 2,000 people who is benefiting out of this uh, motor vehicle business. So it's very important for us to keep them together and to help each other in, uh, in their businesses and trying uh, giving them a chance and the information uh, for them to uh, you know uh, to get their business uh, uh, just with to, to fight with other exporters around Japan so the other thing what I feel is now uh, when we have uh, things that we have to discuss with the officials it's not an individual role what we should do is we should get uh, everybody's uh, collective ideas and try to bring this idea to the table and discuss so I think that's the main uh, idea what we have uh, done right now. 
All right. So, what do you think about the Hambantota Airport, uh, Hambantota Port, uh, that is uh, that has come into completion uh, in its uh, construction um, uh, procedures, and now uh, we are uh, hoping to use it uh, in the future as um, one of the main ports in Sri Lanka for the imports and the exports of the vehicles. So, what do you think about uh, that, and how will it benefit you all in that case? Yeah. Before that, uh, before that, I would like to say that how important a port for a country you know yeah. like uh, if you just take the statistics in Japan uh, they have 1020 ports it's mm -hmm. the Japanese island and uh, it's bigger than Sri Lanka but it has 1020 ports uh, and 22 major ports mm -hmm. 22 major ports uh, like Colombo they have the container terminals and all the facilities so mm -hmm. you can just understand how, how much it's so how much it's good you know then uh, when you talk about Sri Lanka we have only the Colombo port and uh, so there's a lot of congestion and there are a lot of problems going on. And as uh, His Excellency the President has come up with this new port idea, uh, I think it's, it's going to be an excellent thing for our country. Because uh, I know that when you go to start something uh, in the beginning, there are a lot of problems, like people think that the difficulties and things. But if you take it in the long run, I think this will be the best for the car dealers. Uh, which, uh, which we have a lot of space and the government is willing to give a lot of uh, space and facilities for the people to start this. So uh, if you look at the Colombo port, it's, it's very congested and uh, because of that the ships are being parked outside and we have to pay more charges for the shipping. As an exporter, I see this uh, as a great uh, opportunity for the country and for the business also. And when, when we look at uh, the Hambantot area, uh, the, uh, the only thing is the location. They might think that it's uh, far from Colombo and you transporting a car from there will be a cost. I know that's a cost, but the other way around, it's not only Colombo. So maybe people coming from Kandy or down south and all over the country, I think it's very easy. It will be uh, a point that you could transport your vehicles. And uh, according to the new system, we could uh, get this changed into uh, another uh, better system, which people would not have delays or like if you look at the Kalamba port, there are the, the, because of the congestion, there are a lot of uh, accidents. And yes, we can see the visuals as well, how much it's congested. Yes, and congested and yeah. due to that, there are a lot of delays mm -hmm. and uh, it has been there for a long time and there are problems when you go to clear vehicles inside the, the port. So I think this, is, this will be one of the main uh, benefits the importers will get and as an exporter, uh, for us to get constant uh, delivery to the customers, uh, the shipping lines will uh, also be happy with that. Definitely. And, and uh, with the um, development strategies that are put up with the highway, uh, reaching goal is not a big issue. So it's just a 45 minutes distance from Colombo. So I think uh, definitely that uh, would uh, not uh, make it a problem when it comes to the traveling distance um, even. Yeah, that's right. As you say, the distance is a problem. But so maybe if we have got the highways and maybe the train, sometimes you use in Japan, you use the train lines. And uh, not only that, now because of this kind of industry, there will be a chance for people to uh, do do their work even in in Hambantota, like cleaning them and fix, you know reconditioning or something like that could be done uh, around the port. And there could uh, and there will be industries developed around that place. And what I feel if now, if you look at Dubai, Dubai is a port that it's a free port. You bring things and you just store it there and then you export it to another country. So now with our country's vision to bring this port and to get some foreign currency into the country, I think we could use Hambantota as uh, a free port too. Like uh, right now we have, uh, in, my, in my case, we have been shipping vehicles to t Dubai, then uh, to Tanzania in Africa, and we keep them in yards, which the people from our neighbor countries could come and uh, uh, see these cars and buy. You can understand like, if, if you're from Africa and you want to buy a car and you want to see it before you buy, uh, traveling to Japan is, is a very far thing and the, the visa problems and things like it's, it's impossible for them to come. So now people have selected these Dubai ports and like the African ports, Durban and things like that. They visit there and they select their own vehicle and pick it up. So I think we have a big potential if we get into the lines and if we get these ships coming into Colombo to Kambantata. Uh, then, then we could have this transit cargo and hold this port as a hub for uh, the motor vehicle b business. So like if you take Male, they don't have direct ships coming in and there are a lot of countries which they don't have these big ships coming in. So we could uh, develop this as a port and if we give the benefits and 
I think the hotels are coming up and uh, so they, they will be like, they will be visiting Sri Lanka, they will be seeing the vehicles and they will be buying and after that there will be some tourism also around that. So I think in a whole I think this is going to be a good thing uh, for the country as exporters, our exporters association uh, also supports this uh, as I told you. Uh, we don't, the members in, Sri, in Japan who are doing this business does not care about uh, the party, the political party or the religion or the uh, race. It's, it's not the problem. Bef when they are living out of the country, they look at, at the country's benefits. So uh, I think so we, we feel like we, we are happy to support this uh, from the beginning, yes. Definitely. And actually talking about uh, the regulations in Sri Lanka, it, uh, earlier it allowed only uh, to import vehicles which are of a one year old. But uh, with the uh, appeal recently, uh, it has been extended to two years. And for the commercial vehicles, uh, the age limit has been increased from three and a half to four years. So what is the significance uh, of this and uh, what can we talk about this? Yeah, I think uh, when you look at the Japanese car his imported, importing cars history, uh, we have been using these Japanese cars for the last 35 years. Mm -hmm. So we, we think it's, it's, it's a normal procedure. And although it's used for two years uh, in Japan, and a commercial vehicle used for five years or four years, it, it doesn't harm because the road conditions and how they use it, it, it doesn't, it, the car is in a very good condition. Now I would like to say that uh, the, the best cars in the world and the, the qual best quality of the cars are sold in Japan because the Japanese consumers are very concerned about the quality of things. So this kind of vehicles when we get it for a price which uh, is uh, like half of the brand new price so the customers are happy to use it and you can use it for a long time. So because, the co because of the quality of the vehicles and uh, has been kept so nicely. So this reconditioned car, when you look at it, it's, it's like used and things like that. But it's not the same thing what you think for when you take cars. Because uh, the experience what Sri Lankan have about in, in these cars are very long and they know how, what, uh, what, what is the best. So, uh, so that's what when we met uh, His Excellency the President, I explained that we should uh, extend this to two years and, uh, and uh, at least to four years for the commercial vehicles. And uh, otherwise, we would not be able to buy these vehicles for, the, for a cheaper price for the consumers. So he agreed. So what we f felt was my uh, members in Japan uh, has this message that uh, the regulations were changed in a sudden way. So uh, when it's changed suddenly, uh, people are not ready for that. And uh, so I think so. F only that we have to look into in the f look in the future to have a date or something like that or somewhere that we are, we know that there's going to be a change. It doesn't have to be an increasement or something like that. It's going to be a change so that people would be cautious and uh, that would be that won't cause uh, unnecessary problems. But anyway, so I think uh, b bringing these cars to two years and uh, four, four years for commercial vehicles gave a chance for the Sri Lankans uh, to get a better vehicle for a cheaper price for their budgets and uh, also to continue this uh, reconditioned vehicle business from Japan. As I told you, there are about 2,000 people benefiting in Japan uh, and this, this, the facts are with the embassy also and uh, the embassy also was talking about it and so we said we have to continue this business. It's, we have to do it in the way where the government vision is. That if the government uh, is, wants to control them or something to regulate them, it's okay. So, but we have to get together and have a dialogue and uh, talk to our customers also with, about this and try to uh, be more, uh, you know, give them the information before the rules change. So I think that's one thing what I think. Definitely, yes. And uh, with that, uh, we will be moving on to a short music break and we'll be right back to talk more about uh, the Runumagampatwa uh, port and uh, how it would uh, benefit the Sri Lankans uh, when considering about the importing and exporting of the vehicles. All right, welcome back to Rise and Shine, courtesy of Richie T, the next beverage to water. And uh, we were in conversation with uh, Mr. Jagat Ramanayaka. And, uh, of course, um, we will be discussing on how uh, the Runu Magampura uh, port will be beneficial for the uh, people when it comes to the import and the, and the export of the vehicles. And uh, want to talk about it. And uh, it is um, one of the most uh, important ports in Sri Lanka. And um, Actually, the development uh, uh, of uh, the Rurumagampotu airport, uh, the port, it uh, 
started some time back and uh, after some time the construction work was stopped for a while and uh, uh, the Colombo uh, port was used instead uh, and then uh, thereafter uh, President uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa um, when he was the Minister of uh, Fisheries um, he started the construction work and finally when he became the President of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka uh, President uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa he uh, uh, took uh, his whole strength uh, to uh, bring uh, this um, Uhuru Magampura Airport into completion. And um, talking about it, uh, Sri Lanka, an island in uh, South Asia, is regarded as a bright pearl of the Indian Ocean. And uh, Hambantota Port, which uh, lies in the southernmost uh, Sri Lanka, is only uh, 10 knots from the busiest international Europe uh, Far East uh, shipping route. And it enjoys excellent uh, water depth conditions and uh, sufficient uh, land. And therefore, Hambantota Port gradually became a container transshipment hub in the plan of uh, the port development by the government of Sri Lanka. And the port uh, was built in uh, three periods, which includes uh, the phase uh, one project, uh, the phase two project, and a long term project. In phase one, two breakwaters with a length of uh, 1,300 uh, meters uh, to uh, 100,000 um, uh, ton class multipurpose uh, berths with a length of 600 meters and uh, 100,000 ton class oil terminals with a length of uh, 310 meters and uh, to uh, port uh, boat uh, uh, service quays with a length of 105 meters and uh, revetments uh, was constructed. And uh, in phase uh, two, uh, the, the eight container berths and uh, one 250,000 ton uh, class dock was built and in fact uh, um, uh, the two passenger ship berths and the sub T tunnel was also built uh, stage by stage. And the most outstanding characteristic of phase one project lies in the method of onshore construction as you can see and a 4.2 kilometer long cliff Cofferdom with an area of about 1 million square meters was constructed at the existing lagoon. So uh, that uh, was an update uh, brought to you about uh, the Runu Magampura uh, port uh, that has completed its construction and it will be available for the importers and the exporters of the vehicles and that would definitely be beneficial for the Sri Lankans. And uh, of course we are very fortunate to have a president uh, uh, like President uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa uh, uh, because uh, development strategies are taking place uh, not only in one area of the country but in all the areas of the country and um, uh, that uh, these would definitely be beneficial for us to reach uh, the wonder of uh, Asia uh, in the future as well. And um, uh, talking about it, uh, Mr. Ramanayaka, so what is the significance of uh, this Hambantota uh, port uh, when considering about uh, the other countries' um, uh, ports as well? Uh, what is the significance of uh, this port in Sri Lanka? Now, what I uh, see is now all these ships which are going, uh, bringing cars to Sri Lanka, it's not coming only f only to Sri Lanka. So they, they have cargo which, is, which will be taken to the UK or African continent. So uh, as you said, it's just 10 knots away from uh, the sea line. And uh, so the ships will, the, the, the time limit uh, to arrive to Sri Lanka will be shorter. And that will also reflect in the cost of uh, transportation in the, uh, in the, uh, for the ships. So I think the, most of the ships would like to get come into other than coming up, up to Colombo. Uh, and if the port is not congested, I think uh, it will be easy for them to come. Uh, now, as you said, now uh, a port is very important for a country. And peop uh, the countries have gone for war to get a port for them themselves in the, in the history, if you look at it. So having a port is, is as, as you said, the vision of the country. And uh, as His Excellency the President wanted it, I think that's a very uh, good thing for the whole uh, country, not only for this decade, maybe for, uh, for a long, long time. So uh, this uh, Hambantota port, that, that now we are trying to get these ship ships coming in. This is the first time they will be coming from Japan. And uh, the main shipping lines, which is like NYKK line, and they're looking into it. And uh, there's a small uh, discussion going on who is going to be the first and what will be the difficulty. So it's our duty uh, to convince them uh, in Japan and to tell them the real story and ask them to come. I think uh, normally when you look at the, the way how Japanese uh, sh companies work is they want to do it, you know, in a way that not to fail anything. So they want to be complete. Uh, they want to have confidence. 
So to build up this confidence, I think uh, people who are living in uh, Japan uh, and associations like us should also uh, give them uh, this kind of confidence and tell them about this more. So there's, there's a, uh, on the 29th, there's a ship scheduled to come uh, with the vehicles to Hamban Tata. So uh, the discussions are going on and uh, I think that will uh, be our start. So if you, if you, the, the difficult thing is to start now. For an example, like I have seen Kalambut uh, roads have been uh, one way and uh, I think before that when, when the, the discussions were going to do these uh, roads one way like the Gaul Road and the duplication road, people were thinking how much problems they might have and things like that. Now when you look at it, uh, the, uh, the traffic has become uh, smooth and there are very good things which people did not think. So it's the same thing, like if you look at uh, Colombo and uh, Hamban Tota, people might think that it's, it's going to be difficult, but I feel uh, if you get used to it, I'm sure that what our goals will, uh, what the government wants and uh, the importers and exporters will need will be there. So I hope that will be the best. Yes. All right, yes. Uh, so uh, recently, actually, uh, we had uh, a conference uh, with the importers of Sri Lanka and the exporters from Japan. And uh, so what were the benefits and the results of this conference that took place recently? Yeah, as, 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 well as I told you, uh, the, the used car limitation mm -hmm. was uh, reversed to two years and three and a half years to four years. Uh, so this was one of the major things for the used car industry what we had. And, uh, that, and before that also, uh, uh, we had a visit, visit from uh, Sri Lanka to, from, to Japan regarding the sh shipments to Hamban Tota. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Namal Rajapaksa, the MP, visited us and met our exporters at that time. And he also explained about this port. So uh, that, that way we had a chance to get the more, most important information, which our exporters also was a little bit of doubt. So I think uh, now we are ready for that. And uh, as you said uh, at, the co at the meeting what we had in Colombo, uh, the Hamban Tata port was discussed again. I represented the association and I gave the message uh, to our members and uh, th I think uh, we are ready to do, go, with, go ahead with that and we also have to convince our customers, the importers in Sri Lanka, uh, giving the information, what the benefits, what we can give from our side uh, to them. Definitely, yes. And uh, actually, uh, talking about with that, uh, now the smart cars uh, are being developed uh, with the computer systems uh, um, that is uh, developed uh, with this uh, t technological development that is taking place uh, in um, uh, Japan and as well as uh, in the other countries as well. So uh, this computer assistant uh, automatic braking systems are being developed. Uh, and uh, so how will uh, this type of smart cars uh, be beneficial if uh, they are being exported to Sri Lanka? Yeah, now uh, when you look at, as, as I told you, the Japanese market will be the first market who will be using them. And uh, so getting it to Sri Lanka will, will be easier f through us. So anyway, uh, as you say, it's, when, you, when it's automatically braking systems uh, are there, there will be l less traffic accidents and things like that. And the other main thing is the hybrid vehicles which have been manufactured in uh, Japan. Uh, so this, this is the world trend right now. So. With the, with the same um, uh, amount of gasoline, you could uh, uh, use it for a longer uh, run, you know. So I think uh, everybody is looking at this. When you look at Asian countries, Sri Lanka was one of the first countries who reduced duty for the hybrid cars. And uh, our government knew that uh, this would be the future. So I could like to say now we, we export vehicles to Bangladesh, Pakistan, uh, around Asia and uh, even Malaysia, all these countries. But they have not given so much uh, priority for the hybrid cars, which our government did. So I think people have been using this uh, hybrid cars for the last three years. And uh, it's, it's, it's a very good uh, thing for the country because yeah, the petrol consumption is very good. And uh, also it's less problems because it's, it's a computerized thing and you could uh, detect uh, defects and things like that through the computer and it's very easy to repair. So, And with these warning systems uh, that is uh, being implemented, uh, uh, it would definitely reduce the accidents as well. Yeah, th th there are, th there's one uh, for this uh, braking system. If the car traveling in front of you stops and this car automatically stops. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing and there, are, uh, an there is another technology that uh, it's fixed into the room mirror. It, it keeps looking, uh, watching the car driver's uh, eyes. 
So if the car feel the computer feels that he's tired or he's sleepy, it can detect him, uh, detect, and then uh, there's an alarm or the car will slow down. Mm -hmm. So like uh, the, I think there were some accidents around these days. Uh, people were sleep, uh, they slept when they were driving. Mm -hmm. So I think these kind of uh, accidents in the future, if we get this new technology, I think that would be reduced in a very big way. Of course, yes. So, talking about uh, the benefits of the um, Hambantota sort of port, uh, how do you think uh, that uh, it would be beneficial um, uh, when it comes to the exporting and the importing of vehicles uh, when you consider both aspects of it? Yeah, now uh, importing and exports, as I told you in the beginning, import export is, uh, will be a benefit for the country. Mm -hmm. But we should not look at only that. We should think about other other aspects, as I told you, to hold this in us in our country, and that we could have uh, a parking fee from the people. And I think the owner should should not be a, it could come into Colombo. Now in Philippines they have the same concept. It's called a free port, and uh, you bring down the vehicles and you keep it in a port, and then you have auctions and things like that. People could sell it to another country, uh, and. Uh, uh, repairing, reconditioning things also is very important, uh, which which will create jobs in the country, and as far as the foreign currency to the country. When you look at the export uh, way, the, the people are looking at places where we could store vehicles. Like if you take the Japanese ports to park a car per day, uh, in the in in the port, it's going to charge. Uh, they they will be charging about thousand five hundred rupees a day. So if this vehicle is ready to be sold to another country and if we find it a cheaper place to go and keep it, you know, that also will be a be benefit. So uh, we could look into these things and promote this kind of uh, businesses to Sri Lanka also in the future. Definitely. So uh, what is uh, the difference between uh, the used cars and the brand new cars and why do people mostly go for the used cars uh, when it comes to the purchasing of cars from Japan? Yeah, as I told you, uh, the used when you call used cars, it's a domestic car mm -hmm. made for the Japanese uh, people. Mm -hmm. So the Japanese manufacturers are very keen to give the best quality for these uh, Japanese uh, customers. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to exports, depending on the country, they have to change their uh, because of the cost and sometimes of the regulations, they have to change. So uh, they, they they make sure to give the best quality. Uh, vehicles for the Japanese uh, consumers. So these are the vehicles what we buy from them. But uh, the, sometimes the displays comes in Japanese and things like that, but the quality of the car is made uh, in the highest uh, quality in the world. So these cars being used does not uh, see uh, a defect in that because of the road conditions and how they use is, is a big uh, uh, way the uh, repairing and things like uh, maintaining the cars are done very well. So that's why I think that the used car has been popular for 30 years in Sri Lanka up to now. Uh, so uh, the other thing is the pollution, the, but when you look at uh, the, the, the smokes and things like that, the smoke test is done very severely in Japan. So even if they used in uh, Sri Lanka after two, three years, I don't think there will be a problem. And if you compare with uh, some, uh, some imports, import brand new cars, we import from other countries, I'm sure uh, the pollution level is very, very low than the brand new cars of some categories. All right. So uh, actually, uh, with that now, uh, in the uh, year 2010, when it's considered, it was a very good year for the uh, industry of the cars. So um, uh, actually, uh, later on in the 2011 year, uh, with the earthquake uh, that uh, struck, uh, there were huge uh, problems uh, that actually took place. So how uh, and what were the effects of this, and um, how is it uh, uh, being um, coordinated right now? Yeah, actually, that was a disaster in Japan. Everybody kn knows about it. Uh, as uh, that, that was a big disaster, and we, the car industry, uh, the used cars, as I so told you, uh, the used cars come out when the brand new cars are being sold. Mm -hmm. But because of this disaster, the, some factories has to close down because they didn't have parts uh, to manufacture. So that gave a, a vacuum in the used car market also. And uh, the other thing was uh, the, when we there was a radiation problem, radiation leak uh, at Fukushima. So then people were a little uh, afraid to buy these vehicles. So then we tried uh, to discuss with the Japanese government and we got all vehicles to be checked, anything exported from Japan uh, to be checked before shipment, the radiation levels. If it was contaminated with uh, radiation, 
the government rejected them. So that, that we had a chance to give assurance to the customers, the consumers that vehicles were coming out from Japan would not have any radiation. Uh, so now it has been uh, recovering and I would like to say the Sri Lankans at that time who was living there uh, with the embassy staff and uh, uh, with the ambassador, they, they, they reached, they went out and they helped uh, the Japanese uh, people who were in trouble and uh, the very popular Sri Lankan curry and rice because it was a hot meal that they wanted when they were in the refugee like camps and things like that.